Art, in all of its forms, can ease the suffering of post-traumatic stress. An organization called Artists for Israel is using a novel technique to help transform the physical scars of war and trauma into beautiful works of art. The story behind it, it's my wife who lifted me from the harsh and difficult place. I wanted him to put her like she is in my heart. I want her to be on, on my right all the time. We learned from our projects that helping people in a direct quality of life way was the best way to give back to Israel. We covered the scars of terror survivors and IDF war heroes with tattoos to help them reclaim their bodies and continue healing physically and emotionally. It's the most meaningful thing I do. Two years in my service, some of our guys was in deep Lebanon. They were surprised by three Hezbollah terrorists. One of the Hezbollah soldiers opened fire and uh, my commanding officer started yelling, medic, 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 medic. I got up and started running toward him. And because I was the most visible to the terrorists, they started shooting at me. I was shot 28 times, and one got in and stuck, got stuck in my vertebra. He's still there. It's a reminder, a small reminder. Barack, he's like my brother now. We've seen each other like three times. And, but when we see each other, we, we hug. And we both know that our lives were affected in a really positive way by this organization. With me now to talk about the healing power of art is Craig Dershowitz. He was on the stage yesterday, and he's a founder and CEO of Artists for Israel. Craig, thanks so much. Thank the presentation you. was really powerful yesterday. How did you discover, or how did you come up with this idea that uh, art could be very specifically transformative for people with scars and war and trauma. So we started sort of accidentally transforming communities with graffiti and murals and art. And we saw what art can do in the larger picture to help populations. And we said, okay, can we bring that down to a human level, to an individual level? And I have a few tattoos. You mean as a form of expression? As a form of healing. Right, because beauty trans lifts, it brings people up. And I said, I know I've used it for cathartic purposes, to heal myself, to memorialize times of either good or bad. And so we said, let's try this. You know, we didn't know it would work, which is the first program doing anything like this. And then after the very first trip, where we tattooed 25 Israeli survivors of terror and soldiers injured in combat, we just saw this was incredible. This is what people needed. So what are we talking about? G give me an idea of an injury and what you would do to it with a tattoo gun. So each person is different and we're not gonna impose our way of healing onto someone, obviously. But I think of the one soldier who was, you saw in the video, Barack, who was in our very first trip and his wife, he's, he'll tell you, his wife saved his life. Um, he's still battling a lot of medical conditions, but psychologically his wife brought him back from suicidal thoughts and he has a picture of her as an angel Beautiful. carrying him. Right. Um, but we've had an individual who lost his leg and was a big surfer and couldn't surf anymore and got a tattoo of the water in the ocean and he's now partly using that tattoo as an inspiration, is now surfing professionally with one leg. So do you go and you interview the person, get to know them to come up with the idea that you think will do what for him? So we interview, we have, unfortunately, there's far too many people that have been injured. And we interview about 100 or 200 a uh, trip, and we only get to, inter uh, to tattoo about 30 or so. And so it's incredibly difficult in interviews to hear all these stories, of course. And then it's, it's an idea of who is going to benefit the most from it, for who is it going to really help transform their lives. And then we can hand it over to them and the artist. And the artist has experience working with this, and the individual, they open up their soul and through that combination of just raw honesty and this just powerful like sharing of ideas and self, they come to something. So the two of them together, so the tattoo artist is not just somebody you hire in Israel, it is someone who is part of the organization. Oh yeah, they are invested 100% in Artists for Israel and Healing Inc. and in the process and the person they're tattooing. And there are other ways, uh, I read that you do bomb shelters, that you 
How does that work? That what kind of art do you do in bomb shelters? On the bomb shelters? Well, we do a number of different projects. The idea is to bring urban contemporary artists over to the country to do charitable projects in their way. So we have world-class muralists, graffiti street artists, whatever you want to call them, and they paint bomb shelters for the idea of just, they shouldn't be these ugly eyesores in the middle of the community. They should At a time of great stress. At a time of great stress, or even not. Right. But they're still there, so they're a memory right. of stress. Um, or buildings that have been hit by rockets, or even just we neighborhood see, beautification. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's a bomb shelter in Starot done by a Portuguese artist. Wow, it's gorgeous. Oh, the other thing was, the heal what is the Healing Arts Kit? So the Healing Arts Kit is a PTSD prevention toolbox. It's a psychiatric first aid kit is what we call it, designed by art therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, teachers, and parents that is used at the scene of a rocket attack or terror attack to help slow or ideally stop the onset of new cases of PTSD. So I mean, is it just drawing, like the kid is drawing? Like uh, it's, an, it's a number of tools, all created by psychiatrists. Give me an idea therapists. of what would be so in a toolbox. The, the, it's, it's silly, but until you do it or think about it, Right, we're talking bubbles. kids. So we have, a, you know, there's a proprietary booklet about how to use these things, but bubbles, blowing bubbles. What happens when you blow bubbles? Deep breath. You're controlling your breath. And one of the first things that could lead to PTSD symptoms is hyperventilating. So you're preventing that from happening. And you can say all kinds, follow right, the bubble Right, because hyperventilating away. is a short breath. And now you're doing a deep breath because of the bubbles. Exactly. Very smart. Exactly. <laughs> and what, like, what else? Well, even continuing with the bubble, the bubble flies away. And you say, OK, follow the bubble away. So you're not paying attention to what's happening around you and being re-traumatized by the police officers or the noise and the sound or the something the horrible thing that might have happened next to you, you're looking your, your way away and you're following that. Um, of course, there's a lot of, a lot of crayons and drawing prompts as to what to draw to lead them into thinking about strong things and how they can be resilient without saying to them, this is what you're trying to do. So are the kids open to it? Do they realize that they're being treated for stress? No, or no, we're using ages two to five roughly and to them, they're just, they're making art. They're just having fun. And then how do you measure the effectiveness? We have done, unfortunately, we haven't done a long longitudinal study yet because there's just not enough time. And there's a lot of other impacts because the kits are only there, but there's a rocket attacks every year and they might not have them the next year. But just talking to the first responders that use them, talking to the policemen, talking to the community members, the caregivers, and getting as much anecdotal evidence as we can, and then making sure that the evidence from this place where we use them matches this, and to see that there's a, a corroboration of what's happening. Um, I also read that uh, you had said it gives, going back to tattoos again, yeah, for sure. gives you agency over your own body. Absolutely. Tell me about that. How do you see that? So imagine you, thank God we do not have a scar from a terrorist attack. Imagine you do, and you wake up, and the first thing you see in the morning is a scar that's been inflicted upon you that you had no control over. You're it's covered with a tattoo, and now the first thing you see is the love that's being given to you by this artist or this organization. It's just a sense of, I am choosing what I look like. I am choosing what happens to me. I have, I mean, I have many stories. We had a woman whose son was killed in 2016, and she was choosing the red she wanted for a tiny heart, part of the tattoo. And I'm, I'm like, just choose the red. Like, I didn't say it to her, and my wife came over to me and she said, excuse me, I get emotional. Craig, she lost her son. She hasn't been able to control anything. Let her take her time. And even that, like, killed me, you know? Right, because it, it, it's such a tiny, minute thing, but so important to the overall picture exactly. of how she's feeling about life. Exactly. Right. Oh, that was, that's quite beautiful. Thanks so much, and keep working. <laughs> I will. Don't forget to join us later this afternoon at 4 p.m. when we will be checking in again with our special correspondent, Elias Saratovsky. Also, we'll talk with a former IDF soldier about the dangerous threats on Israel's northern border. You can continue the conversation right now on social media, hashtag APAC2020, and you can unlock hours of premium content by clicking the Register Now button at the top of the page. For APAC TV, I'm Victoria Corderi.